Hey, how's it going everyone? Nick Safanaro here once again from the Divi offices for another educational video. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between privacy, anonymity, and security. So there are three pretty substantial reasons for getting involved with cryptocurrency, and they are privacy, security, and anonymity. And these words are thrown around quite a bit in crypto if you've been following it for a while, although the words can confuse people, and it's not because they don't understand what the words mean, but rather they don't understand how the words influence their state of ownership in cryptocurrency. So today we're going to be going over what they mean for you as a user in crypto and why you may not actually be entitled to all three. So in most developed nations, human beings have what is called a reasonable expectation of privacy. And what that essentially means is that you have the right to be left alone. And if somebody unreasonably compromises that right, then they can be held legally liable. But what exactly is privacy? So it can be simply defined as essentially the state of being free from public observation. So you may have heard the term privacy coins if you've been following crypto for a while. And basically what a privacy coin is, is one that allows you to obfuscate the details of your transaction. So your, the origin of the transaction, the destination, and of course the amount can all be hidden from public view. And unfortunately, governments of the world have started to crack down on these coins because of concerns about money laundering and terrorism and other illicit practices that can be hidden from public view. So anonymity differs from privacy in that it is a complete veil from existence. Simply put, someone who is anonymous has absolutely no name or distinguishing individualistic features whatsoever. In today's day and age, it's nigh impossible to actually be fully anonymous thanks to all the cameras out there, both government issued and personally owned, cell phones, etc. It is possible to shield your identity to some degree when using cryptocurrency thanks to the encrypted nature of the transactional protocols. It would be very, very hard for, say, an auditor to track down a 34 character string of numbers and letters that was transmitted over a blockchain. For this reason, Governments of the world are now enacting laws and enforcing that new blockchain companies integrate KYC and AML or know your customer and anti-money laundering processes into their customer onboarding process. And you'll start seeing that a lot more and probably already have. So the question is, if I'm losing the ability to be totally private and anonymous when using crypto, what's the point? Wasn't Satoshi's vision to be completely separated from the governments and banks of the world? Well, you're not totally wrong. But it is very important to remember the third and arguably most important tenet of crypto, which is the ultimate level of personal and financial security. Security? But haven't there been tons of hacks? Well, actually, most of the hacks that have occurred have actually happened to exchanges, which don't use blockchain technology to secure their user accounts and information, and instead rely on the more commonplace web architecture that you're familiar with today. Furthermore, most people who say they got hacked actually expose their private key, which is essentially like a password, or accessed a decoy website that mimicked a wallet that they are used to using and were victims of what is called a phishing attack. In reality, due to the 256-bit encryption that Bitcoin private keys employ, the likelihood of actually cracking or guessing or hacking a Bitcoin private key is, I'm sorry, I have to actually read this off for you, one in one quintillion four hundred sixty one quattro or to trillion five hundred one tray to trillion six hundred thirty seven duo to trillion three hundred thirty uno to trillion nine hundred to trillion. So yeah, it's pretty much impossible. But how do we protect against the most prevalent detriment to software? User error. Well, it's a big problem, but it's one that Divi is working very hard to solve. Because we are standardizing ease of use in our ecosystem, we have a very unique opportunity to greatly minimize the risk of user error. If you'd like to know more about how Divi is breaking down the barrier to entry in cryptocurrency, you can hit the link in the description below, which leads you directly to our website. So although the regulatory landscape of cryptocurrency is constantly changing Satoshi's original vision of being anonymous and completely private, the fact remains the same that there is no more secure way to transact with your money than cryptocurrency. And it's not just security in transacting, it's the security in knowing that you as a user 
own your funds and it's not controlled or guaranteed by any centralized third party like a loan operator or a bank. So that about wraps up this week's educational video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully learned something. Do me a favor, leave me a comment below and let me know why you're involved in cryptocurrency. And if you have any questions about Divi security or security in general, please find us on Telegram. You can always reach out to me directly. I'm always available. Till next time, I'm Nick Sapinero, 